Hello and welcome to another postcard from Dorset. When people come on holiday, quite a lot of the time what they take pictures of and post on social media are sunrises and sunsets. Normally in the summer it tends to be a sunset because the sun rises at about four o'clock in the morning and that's a little bit early even for me. When I was thinking about this design, I went down to my shed of precious things and had a little look around to see what I could see that would be suitable. What I found was this semicircle, which is two posy pads cut in half and joined together so that you can see the oasis sides are in the middle. They're held together with kebab sticks. This, I think, was a leftover from a workshop that I did with Elizabeth Gordon. Quite often, if we do a whole day's workshops, we'll do two or three designs, and I obviously made the base of this, but didn't actually finish it off. I'm not reusing this Oasis. You can't reuse Oasis. It doesn't um, soak at all well second time round and it also if you've had stems in it it'll make holes that if you put additional flowers in later will probably go into the holes and not into the oasis and then they won't drink. If you wanted to do a foam free design for this what you could do is to have a semicircle of cardboard Onto this, I've glued a variety of tubes with a glue gun. You could use PVA glue, that would work equally as well. I've left these little rubber bungee bits on the side tubes because at that angle, the water is possibly going to run out, especially when you put the stems in, unless you've got those little uh, holes there to secure the flower. I will then at a later date glue with my glue gun the other side of this design and you've actually got the same sort of arrangement as I've got here. So this was covered in hessian or sacking or as uh, bridal planners and organisers like to call it burlap. I think it sounds a bit posher to a bride than sack. On here I've painted the beginnings of a sunrise or a sunset. And we're going to start putting in some flowers. This is some lovely yellow solidago or golden rod. Now there is a certain law or charter which seems to say that whatever you want to use won't be ready for when you want to use it. I find it hard to believe that people actually manage to grow flowers for weddings and they all come out at the same time. Quite often when I've been doing these sort of things, the flowers that I want, some of them are out. I know that if I keep going some of them will probably be over by the time I need them and actually coordinating them all together is rather a problem. This is where your flower club friends come in handy. If you phone them up quite often they'll say yes by all means come and pick some of mine. Mine are out and uh, you can come and use those. And I do rely on several of my flower club friends quite a lot for foliages and flowers. This is a radial design. That means that all the stems are coming out from a vanishing point here. The stems don't actually have to go in that far, but the eye would imagine that that's where it were uh, if it was going down. It's a very popular and fairly common design and has been used a lot historically. I 
think people love sunrises and sunsets when they're sitting relaxing by the beach on holiday at the end of a day or having a cool glass of wine on a balcony. People also use it to promote holidays and to encourage people to have that lovely relaxing time. I can remember sitting on the balcony of the old cataract hotel in Egypt a long time ago now and having a beer basically because that was all we could afford at the old cataract hotel watching the sun go down and all the little boats flitting across the Nile. I've now got some lovely red dahlias. These are from my garden. The Egyptians believed that the god Ra sailed across the sky in the daytime and sank down into the underworld at night. He travelled through the sky in his bark or Egyptian boat. I'm just looking at the way this flower is going. It's always sensible to try and work with the direction of your flowers. Dahlias are a lovely flower and I just started, as I say, growing them in the garden and they come up every year. I'm afraid I'm a rather lazy gardener and I don't dig them up every year and put them somewhere out of the weather. They have to uh, take a little bit of a potluck on whether they survive or not. Generally most of them seem to come back year on year. Just trying to decide whether I like that one there or not. I think we'll put him just to the side a bit more. And although you do have to pay a little bit, not too much really for the corms initially, they are very good value. These were from a friend who actually didn't like the red. And I think the red is lovely. We're just angling some of those more naturally, slightly off centre, so everything isn't straight in your face. I have very fond memories of my granddad. He used to love dahlias and uh, I used to go down the garden with him. This is a slightly different one, a spider sort of shape slightly different tone of red and he used to put a flower pot on the top of the support for the dahlia because dahlias are very prone to earwigs and if you put a little flower pot on top of the support on the top of the supporting stick with some uh, hay or straw or something like that inside it when you go down in the morning all your earwigs will have crawled into the flower pot. Although he never actually told me what he did with the earwigs, it's probably better that I don't know. These are a beautiful dahlia, just a slightly different colour, a peachy sort of tone that will go in nicely with our sunset shades. I grew some last year called Café Au Lait and they are coming out this year as well. However, they're a, what they call a, a dinner plate or tea plate sort of dahlia and they are huge. They are just far too big really for any kind of flower arranging. They would be far too dominant. And then What a 
or two pieces of amaranthus. Amaranthus is a member of the millet, millet family. It's known uh, as also as Love Lies Bleeding. If you read about amaranthus in the books, this one is a lovely colour, it's a sort of biscuit shade. When you read about them, they say that they self-seed willingly. Well, not only do mine not self-seed, nor do they grow from seed terribly keenly. This one is uh, take three on sowing these this year. They really haven't wanted to uh, behave themselves. But they do, the dark red one here has this lovely dark red foliage as well. This is the upright variety. You also get them where they trail. I do have one lovely lime green trailing plant coming on. Just take a couple of these leaves off here, I think. You could make this a little more formal in design and have layers of de ever decreasing semicircles, but I quite like the more random approach. When you have a symmetrical design like this, you have to create tension somehow in the design, either through textures or colours and varieties of plant material. And I think this probably, with these very vibrant, what they call advancing colours, adds the tension through the colours and variety of plant material rather than the actual shape of design. On the Visit Dorset website they actually do list places that they recommend that you can go to view a lovely sunset. Here I've got from one of my flowery friends garden some antirrhinums beautiful colours, a huge variety of shades in there just in one plant. Places you can go in Dorset to see a sunset are places such as Sandbanks, the Millionaire's Playground just outside Poole, Corf Castle which is the remnants of a castle sat beautifully on a hill that was uh, destroyed under siege from the parliamentarianisms. Is that a word? I think so. Lady Banks defended Court Castle and was eventually betrayed and uh, the castle ransacked by somebody inside the castle letting in the roundheads. They were so impressed with the way that she had defended and fought off the onslaught that once she'd moved to Kingston Lacey, they presented her with the keys to the castle and they're all displayed there. My favourite sunset is off my favourite hill. Now you're probably thinking, what a strange woman, how would you have a favourite hill? But it's called Coma Hill and it's just outside Bridport in the village of Simmonsbury. And it is a real proper hump of a hill with a little cluster of trees on the top. Just going to tuck this under here. And whenever we go down Bridport Way, I always have to look out for my special hill. Just a couple more of these. 
lovely, bright, vibrant colours. We'll take some through there to the back so the eye is drawn through the design. Oops. No, he has to go somewhere just because. There, I think, is a very good place. Now, just to cover the base of this, I have some yellow and variegated euonymus and also a few of the heuchera leaves. I love heuchera, I've just started growing them and they come in such a huge variety of shades. Recently, or a while ago now I guess, I don't know where the time goes, it just seems to vanish doesn't it? We did take up camping and we started going down to Bridport and West Bay. West Bay seems at the moment, because of the television series, to have been renamed Broadchurch Beach for some reason. But it really is called West Bay. And we would go to a particular campsite, which is adults only now. It doesn't mean that sort of thing. As a retired teacher, what I really like to do when I go away is go for a little bit of peace and quiet. And as much as I love children, what I don't really need is them rampaging around a campsite. This used to be the campsite, there used to be adults only and therefore you could have a lovely peaceful relaxing time without being worried by children. I think it's my problem, I just sit and twitch if I see children near a swimming pool and they look a bit like they're getting too near the edge and things like that. flower club and you're just watching this and it's the first time that you've considered flower arranging do when we're up and running again have a look on the website nafas.org and uh, there's bound to be a flower club near you that you can go along to and meet all sorts of new friends who are very helpful and friendly and it's a really lovely thing to become a member of you don't have to flower arrange to go to a flower club, really just to have an interest in plants and flowers. But soon I'm sure you'll get the bug and like us, we'll eventually have, as I said earlier, a shed full of really interesting and precious things that will come in handy one day. Now I'm just going to finish this off with a few Crocosmia. Or Mombrecia as my mother used to call them. These will add a little bit of rhythm and movement because they do have this really nice wiggly line to them.
I do feel like I'm gradually vanishing behind this arrangement. Probably to do with the fact that I am a little vertically challenged. I've always maintained that I'm not overweight. I'm under tall. Plants and flowers in the garden, a lot of mine have been given me, as I say, the red dahlias certainly by friends. I have some lovely grasses that are coming on at the moment that another friend's given me. And they do remind you when you go out into the garden of the different people that have given you them. It's a nice straight one that's actually behaving itself. A lot of these flowers that we put in here will, will dry. The uh, Solidago or Goldenrod and the Amaranthus and certainly the Crocosmia that I'm putting at the moment will dry if you hang them in bunches upside down with a well. The air needs to be able to circulate well round them otherwise they would have a tendency to go mouldy rather than drying which is not a good thing. Just put a couple of these in down here. I said at the beginning of this that I had made this container at a workshop as well as going to demonstrations and watching demonstrators flower clubs quite often have workshops and uh, many at the moment or have been before the lockdown been running beginner flower arranging courses these I think are an excellent idea and if you feel like learning how to do flowers as I say look on the website that will give you links to the areas the different counties and then also links to individual clubs So I, I was just having a little look in here. I have got a couple of other things, but I think I'm going to leave. I have some nasturtiums. Oh, I don't know. No, perhaps we will put a couple of these lovely nasturtium flowers in. These do self-seed all around my garden, down in the vegetable plot, and you can eat all of the bits of them, the leaves, the flowers. They do have quite a peppery sort of taste and look very pretty in the salads. That one really doesn't want to go in there. I'm going to have to give it quite a talking to. Let's try this one. That's better. between some of the other flowers. And your eye will go through and see that bright 
yellow. So, thank you very much for sharing some time with me and watching my sunset design. And uh, we are in strange times, aren't we? And I've said that a lot of flower arranging and the flowers you have in your garden remind you of different people. We really, at the moment, are not sure what's happening from one day to the next, but I'd just like to leave you with my favourite saying, which is the past is history. The future is a mystery. But today is a gift, which is why they call it the present. Thank you.